Insects are a group that should be pretty familiar with you as they are all around us every day. And we think about it, an animal group you probably see almost every single day. There's over a million described species of insects on Earth, which represents about 58 to 67 percent of the 1.5 to 1.7 million described species of advanced life on Earth. Insects are found on all continents on Earth, even Antarctica, where the largest permanent animal resident on the continent is actually a very small wingless fly, Belgica antarctica, which takes two years to develop into adults, a relatively long time for flies. Insects have evolved into all manners of lifestyles and biologies, such as herbivores, carnivores, scavengers, parasites, and parasitoids. The order Hymenoptera is the third largest insect order, with over 145,000 described species. They're found almost everywhere and play very important ecological roles, with pollinators being crucial elements in our food production, and predators and parasitoid wasps helping to manage populations of insects, similar to how wolves help keep native deer populations from growing too large and overgrazing forests and grasslands. Predators are a group of hymenopterans that you have probably encountered many times before, as they are generally larger and more noticeable. These are the yellow jackets, hornets, or paper wasps, that you may have seen constructing nests under the eaves of houses or buildings. If you have gone hiking in nearby hills, deserts, or mountains, you may have come across tarantula hawks, which are some of the largest wasps in the world, and whose sting is the second most powerful sting in the world, behind only the bullet ant. Ants can sometimes be considered predators too, although they also fill other roles such as scavengers, herbivores, and there are even some parasitic species. Predator wasps attack the adult and immature stages of insects and spiders. Predator wasps are divided into two main groups, solitary and social. Solitary wasps will attack and subdue prey, bring the victim back to their nest, lay an egg on or near the paralyzed prey, stock the nest with additional prey if needed, and then seal the nest, providing a food source for the immature wasp when it hatches. Social wasps will attack and kill their prey, chew up the victim, and fly back to the nest to feed the young wasp by regurgitating the food. Pollinators are another group of hymenopterans that should be familiar to you. Instead of attacking other insects to feed their young, pollinators collect pollen as a food source for their colonies, which is how and why honeybees, carpenter bees, bumblebees, solitary and mining bees provide a natural source of pollination for flowering plants and trees. Honeybees are not only used commercially to produce honey, but pollinate many of the foods we eat such as apples, oranges, onions, broccoli, cucumbers, and avocados, among others. In California alone, farmers use roughly half of the total honeybee population in the United States to pollinate the 2 to $3 billion almond crop each year. You are most likely acquainted with the honeybee, but there are many other native bee species here in Southern California. These six bee species alone have all been found in Riverside County, several of them within 50 miles of downtown Riverside. Native bees have been responsible for pollinating native plant species hundreds of thousands of years before the honeybee was ever introduced to North America. The third major group of hymenopterans that we're covering in this module is the parasitoid wasps. It is important to note the difference between a parasite and a parasitoid. A parasite does not need to kill its host, although if infestations are large enough, parasites can kill their host. A parasitoid, on the other hand, kills its host by preventing the host from completing its current life stage, so therefore eggs will not hatch, immatures will not pupate, and pupae will not become adults. Parasitoid wasps, also known as the parasitica, act as garden or native environment police, managing insect populations. As mentioned before, this is similar to wolves keeping deer populations in check. These wasps develop as immatures either internally or externally on their hosts. Some species develop individually, with one wasp per host, or they can develop as groups, with multiple larvae associated with one host. Each little white structure you see on this caterpillar is actually the pupil case of an individual wasp, with its mouth parts inserted into the caterpillar, slowly draining the life out of this unlucky host. This graph breaks down the parasitoid wasps according to the number of described species in each superfamily. A superfamily is simply a collection of families of organisms that are united by several biological and physical characteristics. The two largest superfamilies are the Ichneumonoidea in the orange, and the Chalcidoidea in the red. These two superfamilies contain the bulk of the Hymenopteran parasitoid species. We're going to focus a little bit more on one of the most diverse families in regards to biology, behavior, and physical characteristics, the Chalcidoidea. 
The superfamily Chalcedoidae is comprised of 22 families of parasitoid wasps. There are approximately 24,450 species currently described, but an estimated 500,000 species waiting to be discovered or described in the world, which would make this one of the largest groups of insects in the world. The members of Chalcedoidea attack a variety of hosts, all life stages of almost all the insect orders, as well as spiders, mites, pseudoscorpions, and even nematodes. The greatest diversification of the wasps is found among those that attack two major insect groups, Hemiptera, which include leafhoppers, aphids, and true bugs, and the holometabola, which include beetles, butterflies, and flies. The chalcids are also highly variable in length, with the world's smallest known insect, Dicopomorpha ecmeterigus, measuring only 0.0139 centimeters in length, smaller than some single-celled organisms. The metaphorical blue whale of Chalcedoidea is Dautophenus wallacei, measuring in at a relatively staggering 4.5 centimeters in length. This photo, which is to scale with the wasps actually resident on that dime, highlights the diversity of Chalcedoidea. There is a large range in color and structure between the wasps, with some much smaller than the others, able to fit in President Roosevelt's ear. There are representatives from seven different families here, all being caught in the same trap in Peru. While this may not sound too impressive, as they are small insects and many can easily be found in a small area, this would be the equivalent of finding species from seven mammal families that belong to the superfamily Canoidea, such as wolverines, bears, raccoons, seals, walruses, wolves, and skunks, all in one small area. The wasps and Chalcedoidea may look similar at first, but just like these mammals, all have very different but important roles in their environments. The Eucharididae are the only group of parasitoids that exclusively attack ants. Their eggs are laid near ant nests, and after hatching, the larva will actively seek out an ant host to hitch a ride down into the ant nest. Here, it will find the ant brood and parasitize the larvae. After pupating within the ant nest, the adult Eucharidid will either walk out or be carried out of the nest by an ant to continue the life cycle. Either way, the wasp is unharmed by the ant colony. Leucospidae, some of the largest and bulkiest of the calcids, are specialist parasitoids of bees, often mimicking the color patterns of their hosts. Agionidae is the family of calcids known as the fig wasps. The wasps in this group have co-evolved with different fig tree species for an intricate form of pollination. A female will crawl into a fig flower at the right stage of development, whose bracts will allow the female to enter but not exit. She lays her eggs into the flower ovaries and then dies. The bizarre-looking adult male wasps emerge before the females, mate with the females while they are still pupae, chew a hole into the side of the flower ovary for the female to crawl out of, and then die, never leaving the flower. Females will subsequently emerge, using the exit hole provided by the male to escape and fly to another flower to deposit their own eggs. Chalcididae is characterized by the large and powerful hind femurs, which are used by the females to help steady them when ovipositing their eggs or to battle other females for territory. The females of one species will even crawl down into antlion dens and use the hind legs to keep the antlion's jaws from snapping shut, allowing the female to oviposit her egg into the soft throat tissue of the antlion. Trichogrammatidae are egg specialists and attack all manner of insects, with an extreme example of host specialization being showcased by a species that will travel along the abdomen of a female dragonfly as she lays her eggs underwater, and stay submerged to oviposit into the newly laid dragonfly eggs. The Chalcedoidae are a very important part of the native environment as they attack thousands of insects, spiders, ticks, mites, and nematodes. As mentioned, the fig wasps have evolved intricate pollination methods with fig tree species only able to be pollinated by certain fig wasp species. The group is also the most successful in terms of use in biological control programs. These programs aim to decrease pest species by introducing new, foreign species or augmenting existing parasitoid species numbers. These programs take years to develop to ensure that any wasp released into a native environment will cause little to no disturbance to established local species. These programs often result in a decrease in the amount of pesticides being sprayed, as the wasps will naturally keep the pest numbers down to levels that do not cause major physical or economic problems. If you feel passionate about research and education in entomology, please consider giving to the Advancing Inclusivity in Entomology Scholarship. This endowed fund is an initiative that seeks to provide students who experience social, cultural, and financial barriers with a scholarship that will support their ability to participate in laboratory research in the Department of Entomology at UC Riverside. Thank you for your support.